We don't want to be a shipping company. We don't want to be a distributor because we do what we do best, and that's make beer. We're telling you about a house bill in Frankfurt that may affect your selection of beers at the bar. Coming up, we'll tell you about a Valentine's Day photo shoot in Nicholasville that you just have to see to believe. He would maim and scar these people because it was not being done um, properly. His patients thought he was a doctor. The harm he caused and the money he collected under false pretenses coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening. It's a battle brewing within the beer industry, and it's making its way to the state legislature. A bill filed by House Speaker Greg Stumbo would affect how beer is distributed in the state. It would prohibit those who have a brewer's or out-of-state malt beverage license from also having a distributor's license, which is like the state system for spirits and wine. Kristen Kennedy explains how this bill would affect both craft breweries in Kentucky and the world's largest brewer, Anheuser-Busch. It's our top story at 5.30. Pikeville to Paducah. They're about to celebrate Covington all the way down to the Tennessee border. Three years. Indianapolis South and Indiana. In the brewing business. Uh, West Virginia and then Tennessee. Daniel Harrison and the guys at Country Boy Brewing are toasting their distributors for getting them into those cities and surrounding states. We got into the business because we're passionate about beer and making beer. Uh, we don't want to be a shipping company. We don't want to be a distributor. House Speaker Greg Stumbo's latest bill, House Bill 168, supports breweries like Country Boy. He's asking state legislators to prohibit brewery owned distributorships like the one Anheuser Busch has in Louisville. About 200 members of a union in Louisville work for the Anheuser Busch distributor there. If House Bill 168 passes, the union president says those jobs could be in jeopardy. I don't think there's going to be any difference in it once, once those unions. Uh, see a change in ownership, I don't think they're going to see anything different in the way that uh, the business is operated. Anheuser-Busch disagrees. Louisville's director of sales and marketing wrote in an email to us, the bill represents unnecessary government intervention in the free market and places restrictions on competition in the distribution tier. Even more troubling is the negative impact this bill would have on the outside investment that Kentucky needs to grow its economy and create jobs. If the bill doesn't pass, so all this is doing is just leveling the playing field. Harrison isn't sure he'll be rattling off such a long list of cities serving up country boy come their fourth year in business. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. House Bill 168 only affects beer distributors. Distri distributors of spirits and wines already abide by a similar rule. A string of vandalism in a central Kentucky community, and police in Berea say someone is shooting out car windows. Police believe it's random people driving around with a pellet gun. There have been nearly a dozen cases since Friday. Police tell us that a majority of the reports are from Friday night, with a few possibly happening on Saturday night. People would come out and find that their windows have been shot out by a pellet gun. But as far as we know, nothing was taken from inside the vehicle. So it is kind of strange to see people just do, just damage property like that for no reason. We have had cases in the past where people would break into cars to steal something and, you know, they would break the window to do that. It looks like this was just done, you know, just out of pure meanness. Police say at this point they do not have any leads or description of the people who are shooting out the windows. We saw a wintry mm -hmm. start to our work week and a drop in temperatures to go with it. And we'll get a brief break, which is good news, mm -hmm. before the next round of snow moves in. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey's tracking the snow potential on First Alert Defender. Yeah, a little snow out there right now. Stress the little part of that, mainly snow showers and flurries that are flying by our skyline. Live view in Lexington, looking down Winchester Road toward the downtown Lexington area. And you're noticing, yep, we're back into those snow showers and flurries. Temperatures into the mid 20s. Wind chill numbers roughly 10 degrees colder, so it feels like it's down into the middle teens. Life First Alert Defender with the temperatures on there. Everybody now with those readings dropping into the low and mid 20s over the next little bit. Defender, those beginning to pick up on an increase in snow showers, especially across parts of central Kentucky. We're getting in on a little more of a flow, a loft that is at least giving us a quick burst of some snow showers that can cover some rooftops and car tops here from Montgomery County back. 
back into Clark County, Paris, Bourbon County. Notice how we're getting that all across parts of the Lexington Metro. We may see that intensify a little bit farther southeast that we go across the Mountain Parkway corridor. Up close and personal on Lexington again, snow showers, flurries in between. Weather headlines, frigid temperatures will replace the flakes later on tonight. Fair skies through Wednesday, then another Arctic front blows in. We'll track the snow potential with that front when I come back in less than 10 minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. Police are looking for a robbery suspect caught on video. Our county by county coverage at 5 30 begins in Nelson County. Bartstown police say a man walked into Thompson Food Mart on West Stephen Foster Avenue and pointed a gun at a clerk. We're told the man demanded cash and then took off. Officers searched the area, but they have not found the man in that video. In Madison County, a man faces charges for causing thousands of dollars worth of damage to a motel room. Richmond police say on Friday, 36 year old Steve Hornback threw a TV, microwave, nightstand, and a lamp through a glass window at the Quality Inn on Colby Taylor Drive. Several other items inside the room were also destroyed. All of that damage was estimated to be at about $2,000. And in Pike County, police are investigating what caused a crash that killed a man. State police say 38 year old Don Jr. Estep was driving along Kentucky 194 in the Freeburn community when his car left the roadway while going around a curve. Estep's car then hit a tree and flipped. Troopers say Estep step was pronounced dead at the scene. Construction on UK's Commonwealth Stadium is adding plenty of new features, but work in that area will also cost you something else. Right now, a planned football practice facility near the stadium means 200 parking spaces in the East Blue Lot next to the stadium will be gone. After the spring semester, more than 700 parking spots will be gone. Students say it's hard enough to find a space without the construction. We keep adding new dorms. Students have to walk farther to get to their dorms. This weather is not very prime for our conditions, and some people have to walk up to a mile just to get to where they're at, and there's no parking spaces available between here and there without paying extra. Students and employees who would normally park in the blocked areas can now park in any other K lot. It is an unusual Valentine's Day date. The Wolf Run Wildlife Refuge in Nicholasville is offering photo shoots with their wolf hybrids. Our Mike Linden even got his picture taken today and tells us how these shoots will help the animals living at the refuge. It's new at 530. A lot of people may go for chocolate or roses for their sweetheart on Valentine's Day, but how about spending it with the wolves? Look at your siblings. Say hi. For more than 30 years, volunteers at Wolf Run Animal Sanctuary in Nicholasville have been taking care of all kinds of rescue animals, from wolf hybrids to mountain lions. All of the, the animals out here have a story. They're all survivors. They're all courageous. They have all come from um, unspeakable uh, abuse. But it takes a lot of money to take care of all the animals. It's like every time we turn around, there's a new expense, uh, whether it's grooming or a vet bill or just buying food, getting toys for these guys, anything like that. So they're getting creative this year. Kindred and her staff of volunteers decided on a photo shoot fundraiser to help pay for the many expenses of the refuge, which closes for the winter. This is Nayeli, one of the wolf hybrids here at Wolf Run. She's 11 months old, even though she might not look like it. They've been bottle raising her since she was just three weeks old. And if you donate to the photo shoot experience, you get to take your picture with her. We uh, have so many medical bills, so many mouths to feed. Uh, all of the support that comes in, whether it's $5 or 5000 is greatly appreciated. Wolf Run reopens to the public on Earth Day, April 22nd. In Jessamine County, Mike Linden, WKYT. Look at that. Our Mike Linden was so happy to go on that shoot today, by the way. To book a photo shoot or to donate to Wolf Run, we have posted a link for you on our website. All you have to do is go to WKYT.com and just click on this story. He masqueraded as a doctor by the name of Doc Hollywood, but he harmed many of his patients instead of helping them and raked in big money in the process. He would maim and scar these people because it was not being done um, properly. William Ferguson was impersonating a doctor, performing procedures and dispensing prescriptions without a license. Initially, patients would visit Hollywood Body and Laser Center for a weight loss program known as HCG. This was a last ditch effort to try and lose weight naturally through, you know, some kind of prescription. The problem is there was no doctor supervising uh, this clinic. 
And so many of these prescriptions were false and the female consumers were not examined by a doctor. HCG diet consists of injections and a 500 calorie a day diet. If it didn't work, Ferguson recommended alternatives. And one of those was uh, liposuction. Again, the person performing the liposuction was not a doctor, was not being supervised by a doctor. The clinic offered treatments for hair removal, acne, skin rejuvenation, and cellulite. 20 victims lost more than $80,000, and many of them suffered psychological and physical harm. There were several victims that had permanent scarring that will never be able to be remedied. Postal inspectors say before you consider having procedures like these, do your homework. Just because you visit a facility that people wear lab coats does not mean that they are doctors, does not mean that they are medically licensed. So you need to be sure that the business that you're interacting with uh, has the proper licensing for the state where you reside. And you can check with the state of Kentucky on licensing as far as a medical license. Uh, William Ferguson was sentenced to more than two years in prison and three years probation. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Governor Bashir says the Commonwealth is ready for anything the U.S. Supreme Court decides to do with same-sex marriage. And lawmakers return to the Capitol tomorrow. Bill Bryant has a look at what bills they'll be discussing in the bottom line. Good evening. Republican candidate for governor Hal Heiner released another TV ad today, but the message is very similar to his first one. Heiner, the former Louisville council member and businessman, is trying to position himself as a Frankfurt outsider who knows how to create jobs. He promises again to fight the Affordable Care Act and common core standards in schools. Heiner faces state agriculture commissioner James Colmer, the only candidate who has won a statewide election, as well as Louisville businessman Matt Bevan, who lost last Last year's GOP Senate primary to Mitch McConnell and former state Supreme Court Justice Will T. Scott, who is from Eastern Kentucky. Governor Steve Beshear has said all along that he filed an appeal to a federal judge's order striking down Kentucky's constitutional amendment banning same sex marriage to get clarity on the issue. On this weekend's edition of Kentucky Newsmakers, the governor said the Commonwealth will be ready to comply with whatever the U.S. Supreme Court decides. And so the Supreme Court has taken it. I'm glad they have. Uh, and I think it'll get decided about June. It looks like that's, that's the, projector, uh, the trajectory that it's on. And, and then Kentucky's going to step up and do whatever the court says. Uh, if they rule in favor of same-sex marriage, then Kentucky will institute those rules and, and we'll march right on. The interview with the governor on a wide range of topics is available on demand now at KentuckyNewsmakers.com. Kentucky lawmakers return to the Capitol tomorrow and a handful of issues appear to have momentum to pass. A heroin bill is seen as a priority in both the House and Senate as Kentucky deals with a spike in overdose deaths. The governor is also behind a dating violence bill that he says would bring Kentucky in line with other states that offer more protection. In Washington, President Obama's $4 trillion budget proposal arrived on Capitol Hill today to a frosty reception from the Republican-controlled Congress. Appropriations Chairman Hal Rogers of Kentucky calls it irresponsible as far as a spending plan and says his committee will go over it line by line to be sure tax dollars are spent wisely. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Quite a gift. A $20 million gift will go a long way to help center college students who want to change the world. An anonymous donor gave the school a $20 million challenge gift. Center is raising the money to match it dollar for dollar. They're calling it the Lincoln Challenge, and it will help create a new full-ride scholarship program. Saying that students will need to have the capacity uh, and a desire to do something regardless of what their field of study or their playing career is that will make the world a better place. Ten students will be chosen initially for the scholarships with a total of 40 scholars by the class of 2019.